When mass producing a part with FDM, you are able to have this magical ability to infill the solid areas with not solid areas. You are able to put infill patterns into a part so that it's still very lightweight and basically hollow, but still has a lot of structure. But now the question becomes, how strong is that part actually when exposed to forces and stresses? So in this video, we actually go through the different types of infills and at the standard 20% percentage, how strong is a standard brick when put under compression? First up, we have the standard grid 20% infill. As you can see, it compresses slowly. It stays rigid for a good amount of time, but then you immediately have the buckling inside of the, the cells within the infill. And then it starts declining from there. And you can see there's starting to be some crack formation along the diagonal until it starts collapsing almost completely there. Still crushing a bit, but collapses completely. And there we have a full failure. Now moving on to triangle infill. Triangle is of course very strong in general, but you have an immediate failure right up there in the upper right, and the cells continue to crush. We're going along there, and then we have a full failure. Now coming up on stars, star is a version of hexagonal pattern, very rigid to start out, but then as soon as you start putting force onto it, you have a catastrophic failure immediately. Lines. Lines are a version of grid, but you do not have the lines intersecting. This is a very unique infill because it's almost like a suspension inside of the part because each line is almost independent of others, so there's no way for failure to propagate through it. And you can see that occurring here as the part continues to crush without actually having a large break, but you have the strain along the diagonals there forming as you continue to crush it. And it continues to crush until we just couldn't go anymore without just compressing the material, though you do have a slight failure from shear on the side. Now coming up on cubic. Cubic, of course, a popular infill within the hobby community. It is very rigid and it is uniform in both the X, Y, and Z, so it has a great set of benefits there, even though it does not have the airflow that you might want with some infills. It crushes continuously without ever having a core piece of failure. And now coming up on honeycomb. The bees like it quite a bit. Let's see how it does with the infill. Moving in here, you have a diagonal failure right away, but it compresses and doesn't fully separate or shear. So we get quite a bit of strength from that. And then you can see it almost stair-stepping from one row of cells to the next as they stack up and just make themselves stronger and stronger until the shear goes the opposite direction. Now coming up on rectilinear, this is very much like lines and grid. Again, the individual layers are not fully adhered to each other because they alternate within layers rather than fusing the individual cells together. So you do have that crushing pattern again until you have failure along the diagonal. Then coming up on gyroid, again, very popular for its weird type of feature, though it's not always really the strongest because even though it is the same in X, Y, and Z, it does not have a pattern that is universally stronger than standard patterns like a honeycomb, but it crushes reliably and does not have catastrophic failure, which can be good in some sorts of functionality parts so that you don't have the entire part explode when fully loaded. So that might not have been an entirely expected result. At the end of all of that, the cubic infill was actually the strongest by actually a fairly decent margin. But the strength is not always the biggest factor and certainly not the compressive strength. We'll have more videos coming out talking about the actual pulling and tensile strength of parts later. But for now, infills do have a huge effect on the actual strength and performance of the part. But there's other trade-offs with those infills that aren't really shown from just strength. When designing a part, you need to consider all the factors of the part. Other infills might be better for waterproofing. Other infills can create different parameters to where you actually have the part crush rather than shatter. Or you might want free airflow throughout the part, so you might want to actually use the rectilinear or the lines format because those actually allow better airflow or allow sand to settle inside of a part or anything along those lines. Whereas the three-dimensional infills like gyroid and cubic are celled off to where you can't actually access the infill and fill it in with anything like that. So do make sure what 
type of infill you want to use. The grid is very often fine for most instances because very rarely do you stress it all the way up to this level. And it is a very efficient way to print. The other infills such as honeycomb can actually increase print times. So all of these are considerations that you have to be aware of when selecting these. Other factors that can affect this also are the actual infill density itself. While we used only 20% in this video, different densities can change how an individual infill pattern that might have the benefits that you want is able to actually rise up and meet the capabilities that you actually need. So do check out some of our other videos where we actually go over how infill density changes strength of a part with a standard grid infill. But aside from that, do subscribe down below if you wanna see more videos like this and comment other topics or variations that you'd like to see us test. Have a great day, everybody.